Hi, my name is Chris Little, and I am the host of The Lifestyle Chase. In 2018, I started this show to have meaningful conversations. I've interviewed over a hundred different people, both in and out of the fitness industry. This podcast is something I'm incredibly proud of. Welcome to season four. Thanks for joining me. Another thing that uh, you talked about was just you, you were super fired up and passionate about like the future of tech within the training industry and more specifically oh, apps. Man, so much so. I, I want to dig into that a bit more because like I'm someone who uses like online training apps. I, I mostly use PT Distinction. I've trialed some of the other ones. I was listening as to how you were uh, part of consulting for many different companies. You're coming yeah. out with some stuff and uh, yeah, let, let's talk about that. Yeah, what do you want to know? So, what was the what was the trigger that kind of got you rolling and wanting to focus more on on training apps? And what direction do you see it going within your lens? For sure. I mean, I did not want to build a training app at all. Like, not like building software is so hard. I didn't want to do it. I really didn't. And that's why it took me so long, because I was hoping that somebody else would do what I'm doing. And, and they, they didn't. And so, yeah, like you said, over the years, I've advised or, 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 or um, have been an advisor for almost all of the major software platforms out there. And I've been in deep negotiations to buy two of them. And the reason why it didn't happen is because I, I basically said, if I buy this, I'm ripping out most of what you do and simplifying it. Basically, I'm just trying to save myself a year of development time because you guys already have a lot of the nuts and bolts. And, and they didn't want to do that. And so I believe that what trainers actually need out of software is absurdly simple. You need to send a spreadsheet to a client. Like that's basically it. And so the spreadsheet, you know, needs to be, it, it, put it this way, the data entry task for workout programming is an unbelievably complicated, convoluted task for a few reasons. One is every single trainer programs different from every single other trainer. But once that trainer decides how they program, most of their programs follow the exact same formula. Really, really interesting use case and nuance there. And and I'll explain why in, in a minute. Um, the second is there's no commonly accepted nomenclature for this stuff, which you call an exercise might be different than what I call an exercise. And also another use case is personal training is personal. And so a great example of this is I had a 67 year old female client who had never lifted weights in her life. And I was teaching her the deadlift, one of her first sessions. I mean, just the deadlift movement, right? I was doing it with a broomstick. I'm not going to tell the 67 year old woman who's nervous in the gym that she's learning the deadlift. We called it boom bum. Well, you know what? I trained that woman for five years. She's now deadlifting 115 pounds. You bet your ass that exercise is still called boom bum. You're not going to find boom bum in PT distinction. You know what I'm saying? So, so personal training at its core, a lot of the specialness is really personal is our ability as trainers to make it absurdly personal. Software needs to be able to to adapt for that. Um, The other thing is there's just so many variations and and, and almost unlimited amount of variations and exercises and stuff like that. So we we basically went and questioned every assumption. And I took it back to the first principles, if you know, if, if you're familiar with that approach. Basically, no question is a bad question. Assume that nothing has been done before. Assume that anybody who's done anything doesn't know what the hell they're doing. Not, not because they do, just that's the assumption. And question everything. And so we hired a firm out of Boston that teaches at Harvard University to work with us on this product innovation research. And we asked every question. We built prototypes. We did interviews. We've been doing this behind the scenes for a year and a half. Nobody knew it was us. We were doing it anonymously. We've probably spoken to a lot of our community. They just didn't know it was us. And, and question every assumption. Like, do you need a workout library 
if you're building a software for trainers. Seems obvious that you should, but actually, if you have one, it creates a downstream effect because anytime you build software, any feature you decide to include creates downstream effects. And the problem is if you include a workout library, now you have to have a commonly accepted nomenclature. Now you have to have perfect integrity data if you're doing a lot of automation and stuff like that, which means you have to have people selecting data packets, which means the experience is terrible because now I need to think and select things that are the exact names as the system does and then go and maybe replace them one by one really awkwardly. The best way to enter in a workout is a spreadsheet. There's no other way in the world that's better than that. We've looked at all of them, believe me. And so our system basically said, let's just give people a spreadsheet, but let's let them make it theirs. So this, this program is called Quick Coach that's coming out. And basically what happens is you go in to create your workout. You go click, click, click on the variables that you want. This thing builds in real time. It's a spreadsheet. And then you just type. You type your workout, whatever anybody wants. And the system then, however you build it, whatever stuff you type, starts to learn bits of it. And so there's a learning algorithm. And so it'll start to you know, autofill if you want that feature on over time. And, and the way that you set up your program, which takes you like half a second, but it's set up for you next time, right? And then that data then, because spreadsheets are a really great way to enter in information. They're a really crappy way to represent that information afterwards. And so you enter in your data on a spreadsheet. And then what happens is the system grabs that data and pulls it in the back end into what's called an array. And it translates it into a beautiful user experience on, on the client side, and also into a perfectly formatted, formatted PDF that you can print either if you're an in-person trainer or your client can print and, and take with them in the gym. And then there's little features that help you, like, like you can leave audio notes for your clients and um, there, there's little features like that. But that's, I mean, basically it. It's absurdly simple. And we're giving it away 100% for free to our audience because, or to our community, to anybody who wants to use it. Because I believe that personal trainers, fitness professionals are the most important health professionals in the world. I'm not downplaying the role of doctors, physiotherapists, chiros, anything like that. But I can't help but think that we need a lot fewer of them if trainers were given the proper tools, resources, and support to be able to do a good job. And software is one component of that. The fact that most of the software companies are run by venture capital, and I call it greedy big fitness, but basically private equity venture capital. And as a result, bloat their systems with all of these unnecessarily complex stuff that no trainer really needs or even wants in order to justify charging a whole bunch of money for their software so that they can appease their investors. To me, that's ass backwards. And, and it's just... It's the same problem we had in gyms for years, right? Business dictating fitness. Like we got to get back to, to people over profits here. And I believe also that the best companies in the world in the years to come are the companies that actually provide people what they need and give people ownership over that. So um, that's a little bit about what we're, what we're doing with that tool. And it's, it's super exciting, man. It's, it's, it's exciting because really all that I've spoken about it is what I just told you. Nobody's really seen it. And the excitement around it is crazy. Like a wait list is bigger than I thought that it would be at launch already. And we're two months away. And people are talking about, it. I have people messaging me, like high-end people in the industry message me asking me if we're, you know, we have jobs available to come work for it because they're so excited about it. And it's like, all that we're pretty much doing is building this tool and giving it for free to people that they actually need and, and, and know more. But I think it's just this approach of like, Let's build what people really need in order to offer a very simple, eloquent, slick, unbelievably personal service. So some of the things that it. I thought about when uh, when you were telling more about the, the coaching platform was just how it correlates with what we've talked about with uh, 
like abundance mindset. Like, I mean, a person with a narrow lens would look at the situation and be like, well, he's giving his value away. Like he's, he's detracting from his own goals by supporting other people's, but I can see the bigger picture in which this is going to totally help you. Like this is going to totally help you live 100%. that life. Um, so let, let's unpack that 100%. a little bit. Like uh, what are the areas where it's going to totally facilitate towards you in meeting your personal goals? Yeah, for sure. I mean, think about what's worth money these days. Because I got news for you. Money is not even worth money these days. So what's worth money these days is owning attention, is having active users, and is having trust and reputation. I look at this as a marketing expense. And if I'm going to spend half a million bucks on building a software platform, or I'm going to spend half a million dollars on conventional advertising, I question whether a, from a strict marketing perspective, I question what the better, this, this is, I mean, I have no idea whether any of this is going to work out, right? Like talk to me in three years. Like I'm not, I'm not playing a game. Like I, I basically took a look at my 2022 and is like, I'm not going to make any money in 2022. Doesn't matter. Because I'm not playing a game to make money in 2022. My competitive advantage is I don't need to. That's a massive advantage. When all of your competitors have a fiduciary responsibility to appease investment firms. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, I don't need to make money this year. I can outserve. I can outdeliver. Huge advantage. And so if I'm going to spend half a million dollars on ads, what am I going to do? I'm going to write, you know, some ebook. I'm going to create some free course or whatever it is. I'm going to send a whole bunch of ads through Facebook, through Instagram, through Google, through YouTube, wherever. Try to attract people to get my free thing. And then I'm going to nurture them and try to convince them to buy the other stuff that I have to buy. In my case, it's, it's education. It's mentorship. Okay. Well, I don't really want to play that game. I'd rather spend that $500,000 and build a free tool that's going to actually serve people in a real tangible way that they're going to want to log into every single day. How many impressions did I just buy for that same $500,000 that I would otherwise have to pay for every single one? It becomes a really interesting marketing question. And then on the back end of this, I mean, over time, so we're going to build a payment processing system into this. Basically, the first update after we launch is, is going to be invoicing and payment processing. So the invoicing, you'll be able to do 100% free. If you want to do the payment processing, which you don't have to, you could process all of your client payments through our system. And we'll take, we take a little bit of a, of a percentage, like any payment processing company does. You're not going to pay any more than if you were to process your payments through Stripe or PayPal or anything like that. But because you're doing it through us, we're getting a little bit of percentage. There'll be a bit of money made there. I've got a whole bunch of other fun stuff, like, you know, I'll let you in on the secret. We're going to be the first company that's going to allow trainers worldwide to accept cryptocurrencies for their services. And so there's a lot of fun stuff like that that's going to come down the pipeline with it. The reality, though, Chris, I have no idea what it's going to turn into. I have no clue. But what I do know is that if we can get a software platform like this used by tens of thousands of trainers every single day in every corner of the globe, it's not going to be very hard to figure out ways to make money with it if I choose to. I might not even choose to. Look at Craigslist. Shit hasn't changed for 20 years. Dude doesn't care. Make it a few million bucks a year. He's happy. He could easily make hundreds of millions. Could even be a billion dollar unicorn. He doesn't care. He's good. He's offering a great service for the world. I mean, sometimes we have to reflect on the fact that like money isn't the entire human experience. Like, you talked about yeah. the emphasis that you had on like the the life experience that you want to have. You want to be able to travel. You want to be able to spend time with family. You wanted these things. And it's going to kind of forfeit some like financial ventures, but at the same time, like we're we're not here to just pay bills and die. Like we're supposed to enjoy yeah. our life and have like a, a sense of abundance. And and building a big business that makes a lot of money. I mean, I, I haven't built a big, big business, but like over the years, I built a pretty good business that had a lot of overhead. 
And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm speaking from experience, I guess. Also, I may be coming out of like a painful experience with that where, I mean, in the last six months, I've cut $2 million of overhead from a company. And it's, you know, so I'm perhaps speaking from a painful experience there. But at the same time, at this stage in my life, I mean, I'm good. You know, fitness industry has served me well in ways that I never desired, in ways that I never anticipated. I mean, I made it up as I went, but I'm sitting here at 36 years old. Like, I'm good. I mean, do I never need to make money for the rest of my life? No, but like pretty close. And I'm not really that worried about making money, you know? And I have a wife that I love. I've traveled four to six months every year for the last nine years. I have a four and a half year old son and I have another kid on the way. Do I really want to do the Silicon Valley thing and try to push for, you know, a hundred million dollar business? Or can I just for a couple of years be like, nah, you know what? Let's keep this absurdly simple. Let's keep this really low overhead. Let's just maybe not push the envelope for a little bit of time and just see what happens. And it's going to be a really interesting experiment. And I don't know what's going to happen. Like I said, I have no idea what's going to happen. I have a whole bunch of philosophies about the way that the world is going, about the way that the fitness industry is going. And I'll, I'll write some, I'll write a white paper too, probably this year about redefinition and job roles in the fitness industry and artificial intelligence and augmented intelligence. I think, I think there's a lot of interesting stuff coming down the pipeline there, but you know, at the same time, we'll see, right? I'm playing, you know, like I said, talk to me in three years, talk to me in five years. I think some um, of the interesting things that came out of that are just like, when we think about you, you're not necessarily wanting to establish something huge on your own, but when we think about how that's going to empower other people, like the, the amount, the level of equip that they will have within what they bring to the industry and how you will be so closely networked with them all. Um, that could be more powerful than if you did put more resources into the goal yeah. or if you went all in kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. I think it's, I've, I've been on a very interesting business journey in the last decade. Like I said, it wasn't anything that I desired. I mean, I, I'm, I grew up in a reasonably affluent, you know, upper middle class Jewish neighborhood in Toronto, Canada. Like I'm a, you know, white cisgendered male from Canada, uh, you know, like I, every adult that I ever knew was a lawyer, doctor, dentist, teacher, or accountant. And every single one of my friends is one of those things. My dad's a, you know, middle management business guy. My mom's a teacher. My sister's a lawyer. My brother is a small business banker and my, and my other brother's a teacher. Like everybody are these things, right? I never aspired to do anything different. I'd like every good Jewish boy. I thought I was going to be a doctor when I grew up, even going into university, going into kinesiology. I figured my undergrad didn't matter. I may as well do like sports science. Cause it'd be fun. I'm going to go to medical school anyway, like <laughs> live my life as a doctor. Right. It was just never a thought. And then, you know, these past 10 years, I've sort of started to get involved in a lot of uh, some more private, some less private, like business owner groups, largely outside of the fitness industry. I just think there's a lot to be gained from different disciplines and people doing different things. You learn a lot of principles that work across the board. And I started comparing myself to them. And you know what the first question anybody asks when you're at a business networking event is? How many people work for you? What a stupid fucking question that is. Everybody's just trying to figure out whether they're more or less important than you. And the, and the way that they're doing that is by comparing how many humans you have under your employ. What I want to be able to do is I want to go to those events and be like four and I profit $4 million a year. How about you? As opposed to what I used to say, which is 30 across eight countries or something, feeling like I'm all like a big shot, right? Whereas behind the scenes, I'm thinking, I'm like, 
and we're not going to be making much money this year because <laughs> we're building for the future, right? Mm-hmm. Um, whereas really all that I'm doing is I'm satisfying my ego to be able to brag to my buddies at business events. It's the dumbest thing. But like, this is the journey I feel like people go on. I mean, it's just, it's this, it's this ongoing kind of, kind of thing where I, I, it's, it's a, it's a journey of building a business, just like a journey of building a body. I mean, you start, you know, nothing, you feel like, you know, nothing. Then you learn a little bit of information and you're at the top of Mount stupid. And you're arguing with people on the internet on why your dogmatic discipline is the best way to do it. Then you learn more and you realize you never knew shit. Like this, it's not dissimilar. True words have never been spoken about like just the social media <laughs> on the internet. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much what I see. I try to follow mostly dogs and uh, friends who might not have anything to do with fitness just to kind of step away from that. But like to keep us on track for time, there's a question that I often ask my guests, but I'm going to frame it differently for you. Because I want to get more of a specific answer. So usually I'll ask the guests to give me a challenge for the day. But here's how I'm going to flip it. So I, at this point in my life, I'm 29 years old. I got to about four years of training experience as a personal trainer. You know how many podcast episodes I have. I probably work mm-hmm. about mm, 70 to 80 hours a week between uh, two or three different industries. If you oh, were to give me... Tell me more about that. <laughs> I, I can unpack that uh, after we finish the show for sure. Um, okay. If you were to give me a, a piece of advice on how, like, what one thing that I could do tomorrow that you think would benefit me based on what you know yeah, about me from our conversation. Yeah, stop doing so much shit. <laughs> one thing and do it really well. When for you, sure. I don't even know what you do. Like, that's the advice. I mean, it's just, it's this, like, what are you trying to accomplish and what's the number one thing that you can do that will that you believe will get you there as fast as possible and it's often somewhat creative i'll tell you an example because i gave this example on a podcast a couple weeks ago it was a business owner podcast and uh and and it was a, a sorry a gym owner podcast so this was a group that's like business mentors to gym owners and stuff like that they were talking about how they how they help um, different gyms build their local clientele and, and whatever. And they're talking about how they help them do lunch and learns and things. I was like, that's cool. But like, I've tried the lunch and learn game. It doesn't work that well. Like you're going to call up some middle HO manager at a local company and be like, I have value to add to your people. Let me come into your lunchroom and, and I'll tell them how to be more fit. And you as a company are going to benefit because your people are going to be more productive. Like there's a lot of stretches there that you got to overcome. You know what I'm saying? But if your goal is to build a, a local gym and a local clientele and a big network that's going to serve you for years, well, there's really only one thing that I think that you need to do. And here's the, they were in Sacramento. So here's the, here's the example that I, that I told them. I'm like, as the gym owner, you should start a podcast that's called The Best of Sacramento. And you should call up the secretary of the CEO of the company that you want to do the lunch and learn at. And you want to say, hey, I want a podcast called The Best of Sacramento where I interview the trailblazers, the leaders, the men and the women that are bringing Sacramento into the 21st century doing incredible things. And I would love to interview Mr. So-and-so or Mrs. So-and-so on my podcast, The Best of Sacramento. Is he available for a half an hour or an hour slot on, your, on his schedule, on her schedule to do this, this interview to share his wisdom? You bet your ass you're going to now have an hour conversation with the CEO of this big company. Why? Because you appeal to status. Now... How many people did that CEO have a one-on-one, eye-to-eye, engaged conversation with that month? You might be the only one. And by the way, you just so happen to own the gym. That's there. That's all I do. That's all I do. And so whether that's you know, the, the right way to do it or not, my, my, all of this to say... 
it's so easy to get wrapped up into doing so many things that we feel like we should do because we see other people do it. I've got to create content. I've got to take off my shirt on the internet. I've got to, oh my God, look at my ass. Look at what Booty Band Betty is doing, showing all these unique exercises. And that's how she got glutes. And that's how she's getting attention. And so I need to do that, not realizing that Booty Band Betty is a Latina from Miami and she was born with that ass. You just, you have to play your own game. And the way to play your own game is to say, what is it that I really want to accomplish? And what's the absolute best way to get me there? And that might change over time. You are my 16th of 18 podcasts this week that I'm doing, Chris. And I'll tell you, man, I've done like 70 podcasts in the last month. I'm about done doing podcasts. But I decided a short while ago that because of the stage that I'm at right now with stuff upcoming, that's basically being developed by the team, but doesn't really need me that much right now. I've decided that the best thing for me to do right now is reconnect with our audience in a very deep one-on-one way. Looking particularly for indicators of who in our audience are not just potentially influential now, but have pretty good odds of being influential in the years to come. I decided that that was the most important thing for me to do over these two months. So I'm going to the edge of the map with it and I'm not doing much else. I definitely sense that like, as I was preparing for the podcast, seeing how many other shows you've already appeared on that have already been published and it, it brought me a lot of excitement in preparing for this. But to be mindful of time and to give us a little bit of time after the show, I'd like to thank you for being on. We'll have your Instagram handle on the YouTube version. Um, they can find you at It's Coach Goodman. Anywhere else that you want to, to send the people? Just if you're interested in, in checking out the software, uh, it's quickcoach.fit. 